step one is we start with that nice center cut piece of beef tenderloin. This is uh, about 22 ounces. We season it with kosher salt on all sides and fresh black pepper. Let's roll it around. All right, we've got our cast iron pan here, nice and hot. Just add a regular uh, vegetable oil. You could use canola oil, soybean oil, something with a high smoking point. Olive oil is no good. We get our beef right in there. See that pan's nice and hot. You get a nice sizzle. That's gonna help to sear it real well, get that caramelization on the outside. Uh, basically, at this point, we've got a nice hot cast iron pan. And what we're doing right now, you see the smoke coming out of the pan. We're caramelizing the proteins on the outside of the steak. This is gonna help to develop a char on the outside. It's gonna give it a crunch, but it's also gonna give it a ton of flavor. And that's really what we're after right now, just developing flavor on this beautiful piece of beef tenderloin. You see here, now we'll start to turn it. You see that nice, beautiful brown color right there. We're gonna get that seared all the way around on all sides. Here we go, we're just about done searing now. You see that pan is really, really hot. That's why I choose to use cast iron because that cast iron holds the heat better than uh, your standard stainless or aluminum pan. Now at this point, I just sear the, the two uh, outer sides, if you will, briefly. You just give it a quick tap. Now, this is where we add our butter. You see, it almost has a crispy shell on the outside. Say that's probably the equivalent of about one stick of butter. We've got some garlic cloves that we peeled. We're just gonna crush them, get that into the butter. fresh thyme and we've got some chopped shallots going in now you hear the herb sizzling in there all that flavor is just getting right into the butter there and we'll just put that on top there and we'll start our basting process And you could smell that thyme and garlic just infusing into the oil right now. And that's it. After you get it nice and brown like that, we've been basting it for a few minutes now, we're gonna get a resting rack. We'll put the beef on a rack. You wanna make sure, because now it's gonna go in the oven, you wanna make sure that it's on a rack so that it cooks evenly. We'll add the aromatics so that'll continue to add flavor to it. And we'll go right into the oven. Now, after 20 minutes, we take it out. We're gonna let the meat rest for a good 10 minutes or so. What that's gonna do is that's gonna help just let the moisture and all the different molecules in there just relax so that when we go to slice it, um, it'll be well rested and it should be evenly cooked all the way around. You see there, that's a beautiful medium rare. And like I said, that resting, that 10 minutes that we leave it to just cool down a little bit is what helps it to keep that even cooking all the way around. If you don't let it rest, some of that moisture and that redness is gonna bleed out and it's not gonna have that even red color all the way through. So very important that you let that meat rest. Add a little uh, sea salt on top. I have a red wine reduction sauce that I made earlier, which we're just gonna spoon around.
we'll garnish with some of that thyme. And then traditionally in steakhouses, we like to garnish with watercress as well. So I have a little watercress here. And we'll just do a little green around. And that's it. Chateaubriand for two. Basted with thyme, garlic, shallots, and butter.